In this video I'll show you 7 top ways to repurpose every blog post you create. If you're already writing regular blog posts, you'll be aware of how this builds up traffic to your website over time. But what if you could accelerate that traffic building process by simply repurposing each blog post into new content you can then publish all over the web in different formats? In this video I'll show you 7 top ways to start repurposing your blog posts on a regular basis and get your content and your business in front of your marketplace and on some of, some of the web's most popular websites. The first way is to turn that blog post into a presentation and publish on SlideShare. SlideShare is often referred to as a hidden secret of content marketers. It's owned by LinkedIn and in the top 200 most visited websites. It can drive significant clicks to your website over time. To take advantage, simply create a presentation based on your post. I find it's most effective if you firstly script out the content that will be on each slide in a separate document and then create the presentation from that. For a presentation you will generally be looking for a mixture of standout statements and lists of bullet points that help explain your ideas. You won't normally include longer paragraphs. The information needs to be easily scannable by the reader so they can get the grasp of your ideas and your main points quickly. So keep your SlideShare presentation easily scannable with short, succinct points. Use software like PowerPoint or Google Presentations to create your presentation. Personally, I'm a fan of Google Presentations. It's all cloud-based and I can always access my previous presentations from any computer, for example, if I'm traveling. I also include the website in the footer of each slide to encourage more people to visit the website. To do this, I use an image rather than straight text. If you use straight text, it will show up in the transcript for every single slide when it's on SlideShare and creates a poor impression for viewers of the presentation. Don't forget that the purpose of using SlideShare is to get people viewing your presentation to click through to your website. So make sure you include a link to your site and a call to action at the end of your presentation. Now it's time to upload to SlideShare. When you upload to SlideShare, include up to 20 relevant keywords or tags to ensure your presentation can be easily discovered by interested viewers. In, in, in other words, your target market. Add a description that helps encourage potentially interested parties to view the full presentation. I usually base it on the first couple of slides and make the closing sentence a question or use it to inject some suspense about what's in the full presentation so it's clear the reader should click and view the slides. The second way we're going to look at for repurposing your blog posts is to convert each blog post into a video for YouTube. Now you've got your presentation, it's easy to now create a video and take advantage of YouTube too. YouTube is the world's second largest search engine and third most popular website. Your videos also get ranked quickly on Google. In other words, it's a powerful way to reach your marketplace. To repurpose your presentation as a video, record your screen, use software such as Camtasia, which comes from TechSmith um, if you're using a PC, or use ScreenFlow, you'll find that from a company called Telestream. Um, use ScreenFlow if you're on a Mac. Run through your presentation, recording a voiceover through a mic. Uh, keep, keep it straightforward and use your original blog post as the basis of the script. Alternatively, if you don't feel comfortable, either find someone else to do the voiceover or use some backing music and let the presentation speak for itself. Even if you are doing the voiceover, you can still add some backing music such as an intro or outro at the end. In the same way as uh, for SlideShare, add some suitable keywords when uploading the video to YouTube. Again, you're trying to make your content, your video, as discoverable as possible by your marketplace in order to attract them to your content. For maximum impact, make sure your most important keywords are in your title, your description and the name of your file when you upload it. Add the link to your website in your description as well. 
Unlike SlideShare, where such a link is not made active or clickable, on YouTube it becomes an active link and so is worth taking advantage of. Number three, let's look at adding a version of your blog post to LinkedIn Pulse. LinkedIn Pulse is rapidly growing in popularity and similar to SlideShare can drive a lot of clicks to your website over time. And as it's LinkedIn, it tends to be high quality traffic too. It's designed for quality articles and means you can simply repurpose your blog post to make it suitable for submission here. As you can see, even Sir Richard Branson uses LinkedIn Pulse to build traffic and online visibility. It's important not to submit the exact same content you have on your blog. To maintain your blog's authority as well as um, help, help it grow over time, you need to ensure the same content isn't replicated elsewhere. In other words, it's best to rewrite your blog post for submission here. So switch things around, reword your sentences, you might need to shorten it down too. It's not just for LinkedIn Pulse, as I'll show you soon, the same content can then be used in the seventh way to repurpose your blog post, which I'll get to shortly. So you get a lot of exposure for a short amount of additional work, or alternatively, you can of course simply outsource it. So upload articles to LinkedIn Pulse on a regular basis and build your authority, and don't forget to include links back to your website. Okay, number four, offer your content as a guest post on other blogs. In other words, you're offering free, unique content to other blogs in your niche. In your niche. It means you get long-term links back to your site from other relevant sites. This helps your traffic directly in terms of click-throughs, as well as giving a boost to your search engine rankings. When your content starts featuring on other sites, it also boosts your own authority and credibility. To start taking advantage of this, simply compile a list of suitable blogs and contact them, providing a link to your own blog for example content. Remember to make it clear you'll be providing unique content not published elsewhere. Of course not everyone is going to respond, but a percentage of them will, and that's how you'll start getting the benefits I've been through. For each blog owner who agrees to your proposal, adapt one of your existing posts as a new, completely unique post for them. Here's how you might go about doing that. For example, you might take a slightly different angle or focus on a particular point in one of your existing posts that can be expanded out. It's worth taking the time to do the best job you can for them. This can lead to a longer term relationship where you supply content on a more regular basis. Remember, the point is to include to, is to get traffic to your website, so ensure you include a byline with your own details and a call to action that encourages readers of the article to click through and visit your website. Number five, use your blog content for communication with your email list, such as through an email newsletter. The relationship you have with your list is of course all important for building the sales and the profitability of your business. You build that relationship and that trust through regular communication, such as through an e-zine. Every blog post you create and publish provides the ideal content you need to be able to take advantage of that. So start publishing a regular e-zine or newsletter and share with your new uh, sorry and share your new content with your list. I usually recommend to add your own introduction to the email too and just connect with your subscribers on a more, on a more personal level. People connect with people, not businesses, and it's important to share aspects of your life, for example, um, that your subscribers may be able to relate to and also remember you by. Include the first few sentences or paragraph or two of the blog post and link back to your site for them to read more. Number six out of seven, use your blog post as the basis of a podcast. Podcasts are growing significantly in popularity and it's another powerful way to get in front of and build relationships with your marketplace. You already have the script in the form of your blog post, so you can simply base each podcast episode around that. According to a study from Edison Research, not far off a fifth or 17% of all Americans now listen to at least one podcast every month. If you've created a video, 
um, as I went through earlier. You can make it even quicker by simply extracting and reusing the audio that you created for that. Add a regular opening and closing track that's distinct for your podcast and your podcast would largely be complete. Finally, number seven, add to article directories. Article directories are still some of the most popular sites on the web and get hundreds of thousands of visitors a day. While they used to be uh, plagued by lower quality content, the remaining article directories tend to be a lot more stringent on the quality of the articles they accept. As a consequence, they are becoming more viable again as places to submit your content and add your links. For example, Ezan Articles is in the top 2,000 sites or so. So why wouldn't you want your content and your links in front of your marketplace on these websites? It therefore pays to add your content on a regular basis to these websites as well. The good news is you can use virtually the same article that you post to LinkedIn Pulse. It's a quick and simple process to add that same content to these article directories too. Another site you may like to consider is Scribd. This site accepts content in PDF form, so it's a little different. However, it is in the top 500 sites online, and so is another site that's worth considering. To thank you for being here, here's a quick bonus tip for you. Use a featured image for your blog post. You can then reuse it when you create your SlideShare presentation. Just use it as the initial slide. Uh, you can use it when you upload your video, where you can post the image as the thumbnail. When you email your list and make your email more visually appealing and enticing. Um, and one, one more idea, when you add to LinkedIn Pulse, where, when you add an article there, you should include an, imi an, an image right at the top and your blog post's featured image is ideal for doing that. Images overall make, make your content more memorable. And as I've been through by creating a featured image for your blog post in the first place, you can then reuse that all over the web to boost your results. Uh, that includes social media, of course, where images are crucial for boosting engagement and for making your post stand out from the crowd. That includes Pinterest, of course. So pin your image, add some teaser text and add a link straight back to your blog. I hope you've enjoyed the information I've been through here and found it helpful. If so, you'll love our completely free 7-step Be Everywhere online marketing blueprint where I go into more detail on some of the in information I've been through here and a lot more besides too. To get your copy now, just go now to vwriter.com forward slash blueprint. That's vwriter.com forward slash blueprint for your completely free Be Everywhere online marketing blueprint to help your business grow traffic, build engagement and be everywhere.